What is up guys, it's Brindamaster here and welcome to today's video. If you do enjoy the video then don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe and hit all the links up down below to Twitch and Discord. Enjoy the video. What is up everybody and welcome to today's money making guide. It's a nice easy AFK money making guide and it is going to be killing spiritual warriors in your player own dungeon. You can easily make 5 mil GP per hour doing this as well as about 500k XP per hour and it's also really really good for getting yourself some nice components for like impatient and for precise for getting all the bits of war priest from all of the spiritual warriors. You also if you're using scavenging will get a lot of nice other components as well which is another awesome little side trick on it. This is the second time I've done a guide for this, however my first one was done like March last year and it was my first ever video since coming back to doing YouTube and I'm going to be honest the quality of it was pretty bad so I'd probably just like not look for that and um, yeah use this guide instead. Enjoy the video guys. So first thing we get onto is the requirements. The requirements are fairly steep however they are definitely not horrendous. Um, what you're going to require is 99 Slayer, and this is just to have access to the player-owned Slayer dungeon. You also need 83 Slayer as a requirement to actually kill the Spiritual Warriors, but as you've got 99 Slayer for this, then you've got that anyway. Uh, 85 plus Magic and 85 plus Defense. You probably can do it with a slightly lower, but to be fairly efficient and do this somewhat AFK, you're going to want at least 85 plus just so you've got a bit of damage and a bit of defense. The last two are not technically required, but they're really nice little quality of life things. The first one is a legendary pet, so it can go along and pick up most of the stuff that you have for you. And the other thing is a gold accumulator, because they do drop a lot of raw coin drops, and it's just really nice. It's another thing that you don't have to really worry about picking up, and it just makes your life a little bit more easy and makes it that little bit more AFKable for you. So for the inventory setup, this is pretty customizable. It's something that over time you want to change and adapt to whatever suits your personal needs. However, this is the inventory that I personally use. I like to take a nice stack of magic note paper as they do drop a lot of super potions which you want to note. A gem bag as they drop a lot of gems and they will fill up your inventory really quickly if you don't take it or you'll have to just spend your whole time dropping them which makes it a lot less AFK. An enhanced Excalibur is pretty much all the healing that you will need here, however if you want you can take a couple of emergency food such as sharks. However, spiritual warriors do also drop sharks fairly frequently so if you do really need them there will be some on the floor. I take a Slayer Codex and this is for a very easy teleport towards the spiritual warriors. If you don't have a Slayer Codex, then you can always move your house to Menaphos and use the house teleport and it brings you out right outside the boat where you can ferry yourself across to the pyramid. You can, if you also have an, a attuned ectoplasmator, you'll want to take your spring cleaner in your inventory and wear your ectoplasmator as it will give you a small amount of prayer XP. Nothing massive, but you know every XP counts. So now onto my inventory setup. This is what I personally use. I use the Ghost Hunter goggles and the Ghost Hunter backpack as it gives you a nice little bit of extra damage against, well, ghosts or undead sort of things. Um, then I use my Anima Core of Serin. So the Anima Core of Serin is quite crucial to this setup. You don't want to use Virtus or anything like that as it will make them unaggressive to you. So you don't need any God Wars Dungeon 1 items at all. So if you haven't got Anima Core of Serin and you only have Virtus or Subjugation, you will need to bring Aggression Potions and I would probably recommend taking aggro overloads and that will just boost your DPS as well a little bit. But for me I think it's personally an unnecessary cost so I use Anima Core of Serin so I don't ever have to use aggression potions. All I have to do is every sort of 10 minutes when they become unaggressive I can leave the room and re-enter and they are all completely aggressive on me again. For my amulet I choose to use a Blood Fury and this is just because it provides some sort of passive healing and just makes it that little bit more AFKable and you don't really need to worry about your hit points. If you're going to be doing the aggression potion strategy and you're going to be kind of there a little bit more, I would probably recommend taking a Salve Amulet E as it does provide again even more damage which will greatly increase your kills per hour but it is a little bit less AFK and you kind of have to pay a bit more attention to your hit points. For your staff, I would recommend a Noxious or a Chaotic Staff for the purpose of this guide, just to show that it can be done and is nice and easily with a tier 80. I'm going to be using a Chaotic Staff the whole way through. Um, if you augment it, just put some cheap perks on it. It's not anything like that. My one here is personally just my Planted Feet switch, so it only has Planted Feet on. But I just thought it would be more realistic for the purpose of a guide using that than using my Staff of Sliske because I don't have a Nox. 
For the gloves, cinder banes are definitely the best in slot here, as you can get a nice bit of extra damage from the poison. However, if you don't have cinder banes or can't afford them, then celestial hand wraps are a nice cheap alternative, which also mean you can keep your aggression. However, if you are again in subjugation, then you can just use subjugation. For the boots, you want to use blaster fusion boots, they are the best in slot here. However, if you don't have them, silver hawk boots are a free alternative. Um, which provide pretty similar boosts. You're not going to be using detonate much here as it requires a bit of effort and is less AFK. So they're pretty similar. For the ring, you can just take any ring. I'm taking a ring of vigor just so I have a little bit of adrenaline left after using sunshine or tsunami. You also want to have equipped your spring cleaner or if you have an ectoplasmator, you want to equip that and have your spring cleaner in your inventory as it will just allow you to get a little bit of prayer XP. It's nothing major, but you know, everyone wants some free prayer XP. So like I said, the easiest way to get there is with the Slayer Codex. However, if you don't have the Slayer Codex, move your house to Menaphos. Then you can teleport there either with runes or with a house teleport tab. Just exit your house, or if you have it set right, you'll be outside your house anyway. Then you can talk to Portmaster Cags, and he will take you to the Sunken Pyramid. From there, you can just enter the pyramid and just run to the room. You want to put the souls in the small room, as it means they will automatically aggro on you without having to use an aggression potion, which is pretty awesome. So for the method, they're actually fairly self-explanatory to kill. You just stand in the room. If you have it on anything other than minimum graphics, you have this like chandelier thing, which provides a nice shadow on the floor. And I generally try to stand in that as it means I am in the middle of the room and everything will aggro on me pretty successfully from there. I've got on screen now a picture of my action bar. Um, you can customize and change your action bar to suit your personal needs, but this is what I personally use. I have Sunshine and Tsunami as my ultimates at the beginning, as they're really good ones to use. And then I just have as much AoE stuff as possible. So I start off with Corruption Shot. Uh, no, Corruption Blast, this is Mage, and then Dragon Breath, and then Chain. If you have Caraming, Chain will hit everything, but I personally don't think it's necessary. Um, there are better things you can have, like if you have Ruthless or something, where you get the extra like 5 or 7.5% DPS, depending what tier you have of it. Um, so that's my action bar, and you basically just stand here, kill them, area loot every now and then, and after about 5 to 10 minutes, they will become unaggressive on you. When they become unaggressive on you, you'll just have to leave the room and come back. So as you can see in this clip on screen now, they've become unaggressive to me. I've been in there for a few minutes. So all I have to do is go through the barrier, run all the way back up through the dungeon doorway into like the main entrance room bit, and then just rejoin straight back in. And then from there, you can just go straight back through the barrier and go back to standing underneath the chandelier and they will be aggressive on you once more. Another thing to note is you need to, if you're using a legendary pet, remember to call him back in, otherwise it'll be stuck outside the room and not pick up anything for you. When it comes to gathering the souls, you really do want five in the player and dungeon. The easiest place I've found to gather them is in the Zamorok part of God Wars Dungeon 1. However, the Saradamin part has some there as well, which is also pretty easy. I just think this one is a little bit easier. I actually got very, very lucky whilst filming this clip. I managed to get a Yushabti field within just over a minute. Um, but yeah, the only thing you'll need to do for this is have basically the gear that I said for the AFKing and just take some Oshabtis in your inventory and you want to kill them. It will take you a few hours to get all five. Um, I would not expect to get very, very lucky like I did and capture one within one minute. Um, it took me when I was actually filling my player own dungeon probably two to three hours to actually fill all of the Oshabtis. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth doing, and obviously you are making money and getting XP whilst here as well, albeit not quite as good as when you're in your player in dungeon, but it is definitely still some amount of profit, which is quite nice. Thank you very much for watching, everybody that has watched this far along. I really hope you did enjoy this guide and find it helpful. And I really hope that you can go and kill Spiritual Warriors and make some really good GP gains. It's something that I did on my alt account for like a year solid and I made a massive amount of GP on there. And it was really, really good just in the background for an alt to make money for my main. Um, and it's something that doesn't require much attention or anything like that. So if you have an alt, it's definitely a good thing to do. But if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of all my future content. If you did enjoy also, there are links in the description to my Discord server and to my Twitch channel where I stream a couple of times a week over there. Thank you very much for watching guys and until next time, see ya.